Right now we are going to turn things over to a business in Vancouver. Haley Wooden is joining us now. And Haley, a bit of a negative turn with regards to the NAFTA renegotiations. What's happening? We're at the end of the second round of talks, which are held in Mexico City, and reports point to the fact that the talks were actually very negative in tone. The Canadian press noting that there's a bit of a pattern where one country would bring up an issue that's key to that country's interests, and the other two negotiating parties would simply refuse to engage on that issue. So for Canada's part, a key interest to our country has been negotiating greater access to professional visas and negotiating the mobility of talent across borders. Borders. Reportedly, countries south of the border have not been willing to negotiate on that. And as we know, the U.S. has some very strong opinions related to immigration. On the other side, though, the U.S. has tried to bring up supply management of dairy when it comes to Canada. And that has been something the Canadian government has been quite clear they're not willing to negotiate on. So all in all, it seems as though all three countries reaching sticking points on very key controversial issues. And of course, there are many points where the three countries can agree on, but it's going to be hammering out these issues that will determine whether we see a renegotiated NAFTA and ultimately mm -hmm. success at the end of this process. All right. And Haley, a little closer to home. Federal Finance Minister Bill Morneau will be in Vancouver today. This says he goes into more detail about some of the proposed tax reforms uh, for small businesses. This has been fairly controversial. The federal government saying that this week they're redoubling efforts to try and calm concerns around these changes. They were first announced in July and they really concern private corporations owned by Canadians. There are three proposed tax changes that would uh, eliminate what the government calls our tax avoidance schemes or tax loopholes. Among them, converting private income to capital gains, using passive investment portfolios, and then income sprinkling, which is spreading income to family members who aren't necessarily associated with the business. But the idea is to try and avoid tax, according to the federal government. Now, they say these tools are used by high income earners to avoid tax, but there have been a lot of criticisms from small business owners who say it actually makes it more risky for them to launch businesses. It could in theory, thwart entrepreneurship moving forward and prevent people from starting their own businesses. And all in all, a lot of concerns about what this means for the future. People have planned their next few years based on having access to these tools. If they're eliminated, obviously quite a bit of concern about what this means for their financial future. Of course. All right. Haley Wooden with Business in Vancouver joining us today. Haley, thank you very much. Thank you.